Purdue takes on Utah State in the 1-8 matchup in the Midwest region. So let's take a look at some of the film on just what are things that will stand out within this game. I'm going to go through five key concepts that I think are really going to make or break this game for both sides. So starting with Utah State's post defense, right? And we have to start there because Purdue has Zach Eady. Utah State's been in the bottom 10 percentile of post up defending post ups in the entire season. So like they just haven't had a ton of success inside defending both both the post and just at the rim in general. And so this is from earlier in the year against San Diego State um, and Utah State's in the white. They're on defense. And so you're just going to see the big area that they've struggled is these kind of seals in the middle. Right. And, and that's something Purdue loves to do. And we'll talk about that in a second. But it just have this big right here. Um, he's just going to seal and post up in the middle. And, and now you can see Utah State does it do a great job of taking away the perimeter. They are one of the best three-point shooting defenses in the country, which, again, we will also talk about. But look at all this space now. And, and so Utah State's fronting, and the lob's going to go over. But if they're playing behind or on the side, um, in terms of Purdue, Edie's just going to catch it and go to work. This time, lob over. And then he catch, he's able to catch it right there. And now he's just able to go up with it for an easy layup. Fresno State has only doubled on about 20% of opposing post-ups right now this year. So it's not something that they do all the time, but they've shown that they do have the capability of doing it if they really need to. And what they do usually if they are going to double. So again, Utah State's on defense here. Um, Fresno State's going to work and getting a post-up in just a second. Ball's moving around. And so now as this post-up comes here, immediately this strong side guard is going, going to come down and double. Every once in a while, they'll throw in where the big comes over and double, but most of them that I've seen, it is the strong side guard. He's going to come down and double. And then what Utah State does is they just rotate. So 12 right here is guarding this man. He's going to rotate over. Four, who's the low man, he's going to rotate up. And so now as the pass kicks out, now whoever doubled, it's their job to retreat all the way across court. And so quick passing like this can beat it, uh, but it is probably the, the only way that really can beat it. And even then... Utah State, I mean, he's still going to get a decent contest, and they do a great job of contesting uh, catch-and-shoot threes. But this is just kind of what they'll do if they do decide to double Edie. Now, if Utah State does decide to uh, double from kind of the guard spot, one thing Purdue has just done, I mean, even much better this year, even compared to last year, um, and Edie's improved at too, is getting him in the middle. So they'll run horns high-low. They'll run um, just all these different sets, or sometimes it's as simple as just a ball screen right here, right? So now Edie's going to come off the ball screen. And so now they're going to get to a high low look this way. And Edie's just creates space. Like that's just, that's what he does. And so they get him in the middle. So this, if you get in the middle, it is much, much harder to double. Um, and if you do double, usually that means somebody's going to be wide, wide open that Edie can easily hit or the double's just not going to get there in time. And now Edie can just pretty much catch and go up right away. And that's just going to be something I think Purdue goes to a lot against this Utah state defense. So Utah State has shown that they will throw a zone defense in, and it definitely isn't their base defense for every single game, but there are games, even the TCU game that they just had, where they go to it a lot. And it pretty much starts in a 1-3-1, and then from there it just kind of morphs into whatever they need at that moment, whether it be more of a 2-3 look, a 3-2 look. The big here can stay up, can drop back. They just do a great job of making sure that the ball does not go in the prim or inside the perimeter whatsoever. And so you can see here, Fresno State's just going to kind of keep moving the ball around the perimeter, and, and Utah State's going to keep reacting. They'll have this little man, right, when the ball goes corner is when they kind of drop to that 2-3 look more, goes back up. Now they get into the 1-3. They are also going to always make sure, obviously, somebody is tagged um, down low here on the big man, especially when it's ED. There will always be one guy here if they do go zone. And so that means that, you know, a skip pass like that has some potential, um, but what Utah State does well is they do a great job of closing out on shots. And, and so... You may be able to get a decent looking three, but more often than not, it's going to be contested and it's hard to make them. Another example of the zone here. And so again, kind of more of a one, three, one type look where they're going to bring kind of, they don't, full, they don't, it's not a one, three, one trap, but zone type look that weak side man, whoever's weak side wing is going to drop down on the big. Again, that's going to be very important with Edie because then this does open up that skip pass. And especially with Edie down here, you have to respect that. Um, and, and so now as Utah State, closes out I, I think this is the other important thing is if Purdue can get downhill a little bit then it really throws this Utah State defense off when, when Utah State keeps guards on the perimeter you're basically just you're hoping that's a three-pointer goes in and that's pretty much all you can do but once you get downhill New Mexico does a great job dropping here to the opposite block and that brings a uh, weak side defender here down a little bit and so it's all skip passes and just a little bit of ball movement skip passes are going to be you know, that initial skip pass here is, is what sets this up. 
And now as he attacks the closeout, gets downhill, this another skip pass right here is going to get a wide open three compared to a contested three. So now Purdue hasn't played against a ton of zone this year, but they found pretty good success for the most part um, when they have played it. Arizona for you know a, a eight minute stretch or so in the second half found success defensively with the zone, um, but then Purdue eventually figured it out. And, and Purdue runs a lot of their same stuff. So again, this like I think Utah State's zone defense will be better than what like Arizona's is here, especially because Arizona just kind of went to this on the fly. Um, but at the same time, just some of the concepts will still apply. And that is, they're going to try to screen this, this top guy. Um, Purdue still will absolutely screen the top guy. And if we think back to what I talked about with like being able to attack inside, um, that's just kind of what this hopefully frees up. And so now even Brain just getting here, Brainsmith getting here and kicking out, look at what the defense has to do for rotations. That combined with just how dominant Edie is down low, how much attention he demands. Now as the swing to, to Lance Jones happens, like it's, you know, they have to go off of ED into Jones, and it's just a tough thing to do. So um, Purdue's just going to try to move the ball, get downhill, and, and see what happens from there. Now on the flip side for Utah State and their offense is great Osobar. He is very, very good in the post, and he's their go-to guy um, as a scorer and just has had a lot of success in post-ups. So we're going to go through a couple plays on, on kind of how – um, they get him these looks. So he can go in the middle, he can face up, he kind of can just do a little bit of everything. And so this is a what's called horns high-low. So horns, two guys right here, kind of elbow or top of the key in these slots, two guys in the corners. Um, and this is a play Purdue runs all the time for Zach Eady. And so the screen happens, and then immediately it's going to get to high-low, and Osabor is going to try to seal in the middle. Now, timing on this one wasn't great, especially to try to get him the ball right there. But eventually, they're still going to get him the ball down low. And this is where if you leave him one-on-one, -on -one, he loves getting over that right shoulder. And so he'll see him post up kind of on this right block a lot. So that way he can get go middle, get to the left hook kind of over his right shoulder. Um, it's something Utah State will go to a lot. So we'll go here. Horns high low, um, a set that they love. And so basically, just go off the screen. And, and all this is doing is getting Osabar right here. Um, just getting him downhill kind of into the middle of the paint where he can seal and then go to work. And so Osobar is, is just so good at, he can also instead, like he can play with his back to the basket and get to that right shoulder a lot, or he can face up here too. And now this is where I think like if Edie's guarding him, I expect Edie to maybe be back here more. Um, and, and if they take a jumper, he's, they're probably going to live with it. If they make a few, then they adjust from there. But when they, if they does play up, this is where he can just, kind of get into the body and he has pretty good footwork where he can create enough space on the drive. Um, and it could be an interesting problem to Zach Eady if he does choose to guard him that far out. So now defensively, what I do think Purdue will try to do to counter that, especially because because Utah State doesn't have like an insane amount of three-point shooters. Um, and there's never really a lineup that Utah State can put out where it's like five legitimate shooters is, is something I think Purdue has shown um, especially later in the year. And, and so you can see here, Pharrell Payne gets his post up. And whether it be Edie guarding the post up or Gillis or TKR, they're going to force baseline. And the other big, which in this case is Gillis, but sometimes this is Edie, sometimes this is TKR, they're going to be showing this backside help. And so this does put pressure on whoever this weak side man he is here. This time it's Brayden Smith to have to drop down and help um, on kind of whoever's on the opposite block. But this is something that they'll do and, and just try to force, you know, any Utah State post up into two defenders here. So it isn't like a hard, hard double immediately. It's more just pushing into a double team um, and trying to force the tough shot that way. And then from there, it is just all on the perimeter defenders to have to rotate if there is a kick out. Utah State is maybe not like one of the fastest teams in the country, but they do have a pretty up-tempo offense and they are very, very comfortable getting out in transition. And they've been one of the most efficient teams in transition in the entire country. And so what they kind of do um, to kind of get that is, so you're going to see the shot up by San Diego state is they're just going to usually have somebody try to leak out. Uh, and right here, I mean, there's a little bit of a loose ball, which makes it a little bit different too, but like you can see San Diego state is not back at all. And Utah State's already going to have a guy back. And so they're very, very comfortable throwing the ball ahead. A lot of guys can finish really well at the rim. Um, and so this is just where they, they'll get a, you know anywhere from six, six plus easy points kind of this way where it's just they have these leak out situations and then nobody's really back to help protect the rim. Utah State also just, they do a good job rim running, rim running with their bigs. And so you're going to see 
you know, again, Utah State's not like absolutely blitzing down the floor, but everybody's running where they need to be. They fill out wide, and then their big is going to be trailing right here. And he's just going to rim run. He's just going to rim run all the way to the rim, um, and Utah State will do that. They will have their bigs kind of trail and dive to the rim, and defenses have to pick it up because if not, then they're going to get a wide-open dunk like here. here. Um, and Purdue's transition defense hasn't been the best, um, so I think this will be a pretty you know big thing if Utah State can get out and run a good bit. And the last main key that I'll go over is three-point shooting. So Utah State is the third-best three-point defense in the country. Purdue is the second-best three-point shooting team in the country. Something's probably got to give. And we're going to go through a little bit of the defense here for Utah State, just how they do such a good job of forcing tougher threes. So um, you're going to see, you know, staying, staying connected on the ball handler right here is always a big thing. Um, they, Utah State does hedge, so that's also another way, like, New Mexico isn't going to be able to get a three right here because Utah State hedges. They do a great job rotating, and then they also just do a really good job on the weak side, right, of number 12 drops down now and has two guys weak side. Um, and so just being able to understand that, like, what the gaps are that they need to be in so that way those skip passes can't always be there. They do they clog in the lane here um, on the post up, and now New Mexico is just pretty much forced to take a, a really, really deep three, and even that is it, still pretty contested on the shot. So although, you know, a, t a lot of teams do miss a lot of wide open shots against Utah State, it, it is they are the best team in the country at, at having opponents miss open threes. But at the same time, part of it is probably just because they do such a good job every other time of forcing these tougher contests. Now, on the flip side of that, Utah State's not a team that takes or makes a ton of threes, but I do think that they probably were going to have to in order to stay uh, with it with Purdue. And one interesting thing, so 23 right here is Isaac Johnson and He's only shooting 33% on the year, but he has been shooting a lot better as of late. He is a seven-footer, um, so I think it's interesting what Purdue will try to do with him. I assume that they'll throw TKR and Gillis on him because he will step out to the three-point line, and this is going to be a simple play right here, right? It's this horn, um, horns high-low, right, where they're going to try to get it eventually up here. Also, Bors is kind of diving down here, but now he can pop. He Johnson right here, he can absolutely pop out to the three-point line and, and take it and make it. And so if he gets hot, like kind of like he did against TCU, I think that'll be an interesting matchup because aside from him, Utah State has like two or three guards where, who are pretty solid shooters, but there isn't a ton of shooting depth on this team. I think Utah State really needs a big game from him, especially on the perimeter. One quick bonus tip or bonus thing that I'll be looking for is kind of the who gets in foul trouble first. Great Osobor is... Uh, ninth in the country in free throw rate. Zach Eady is fifth in the country in free throw rate. We know how physical and dominant Zach Eady is. And Osbor in the Mountain West has been of similar type where he just he draws an insane amount of fouls. So um, and then his counterpart, uh, Johnson, on the you know, is more of the stretch big. He also fouls a ton. So it'll be interesting to see. Can Utah State get Eady in foul trouble first? Is Eady gonna do his thing and get the bigs in foul trouble and force Utah State to play small?